Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. So I was looking at the Wikipedia page for the square root of two, you know, like as one does. And I saw this identity, which I had never seen before. And it didn't have a proof, but I thought I could work out a proof pretty easily. And that's exactly what I did. And so I'd like to present that identity as well as the proof today. And the identity goes like this. We have the square root of two is equal to three over two minus two times this infinitely nested object. So we have one quarter minus one quarter minus one quarter minus one quarter minus one quarter where we have all of that nesting and then we've got these squares on all of those nested objects as well. So I've color coded the parentheses a little bit so you can see what's going on. So this dot 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 is kind of the infinite nesting here and inside of that infinite nesting all of that is squared and then just outside of that you have one quarter minus that bit all of that squared just outside of that you have one quarter minus all of that all of that squared and so on and so forth okay so in order to get a handle on what's going on here well, I think we probably need to write this down a little bit more carefully, but anytime you have an infinitely repeated sequence of things happening, the nice way to do it is with a recursively defined sequence. So let's do that. So let's define a new sequence, which will be a n as n goes from zero to infinity by a sub zero is equal to one quarter. So let's see, this would be like our a sub zero term right here. And then our a sub one term is what we would get if we were to do this thing exactly one time. So that would be something like this. So a sub one would be what we get from taking one copy of this thing happening. So a one would be, would be one quarter minus one quarter squared. Great. Like I said, that's if you cut it off right here. So you slam those yellow parentheses all the way back here. And I guess I'd like to point out that this a zero is what's happening in this larger square root. So I did not color code the outside square root because our recursively defined sequence is occurring inside that square root. But maybe it's best to rewrite this in terms of the previous term, which is not so hard to do. That's equal to one quarter minus a naught squared. Great. And then we can see what's going on one step further out. So maybe from here all the way to here. And there we'll see that we get a2 is equal to one quarter minus one quarter minus one quarter squared all squared. So like I said, that's if you split this thing out just at this spot right here. So you slam the orange parentheses back. But we could probably write that in terms of the a1 term as well. So that would be 1 quarter minus a1 squared. And then I think that's probably enough like little examples so we can see what our pattern is. Okay, so we've got our seed, a naught is one quarter, and then for n bigger than or equal to zero, let's set a n plus one equal to one quarter minus a n squared. Great. And then what we'll do is prove that this thing converges. So maybe that'll be like a claim that we prove that the limit as n goes to infinity of a n exists. And in order to do that, we'll use something called the monotone sequence theorem. So let's get to that. So now we're gonna apply the monotone sequence theorem to our recursively defined sequence, which is making a careful description of what's happening up here in order to show that that sequence converges. So let's recall that the monotone sequence theorem says that any bounded monotone sequence converges. We'll start proving that this sequence is bounded. And in fact, it'll be bounded between zero and one quarter. Okay, so let's get to the proof. We'll start by showing that it's bounded above by one quarter. And that's pretty clear. I'll just say clearly, we have a n is less than or equal to one quarter for all n. And then let's talk our way through that. Well, notice that each of these a n's 
is defined by one quarter minus a non-negative number. We know that that is a non-negative number because it's a real number squared. So since we're subtracting something which is at least equal to zero, we're always gonna end up with something less than one quarter. Okay, so clearly we have this, and now we'll prove that a n is bigger than or equal to zero by induction. Our base case is totally done here. We have zero is less than or equal to a naught. That's pretty clear because a naught is defined to be one quarter. A quarter is bigger than zero. Okay, so now we'll make an induction hypothesis. So our induction hypothesis will be to suppose for some k bigger than or equal to zero, we have a sub k is bigger than or equal to zero. But then let's note that if we take a k plus one, we get one quarter minus a k squared. And then given the case that a k is also less than or equal to a quarter from what we had up here. So we know we're subtracting off something which is less than or equal to one over 16. So this thing is bigger than or equal to one quarter minus one over 16, but that's clearly bigger than or equal to zero. So let's see, that means we have a k plus one is bigger than or equal to one quarter, but that finishes the induction step. Okay, so let's see, we've shown that our sequence is bounded, and so now we need to show that it's monotone. I'd now like to take just a moment to talk about today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is an online interactive learning platform with thousands, that's right, thousands of lessons on a variety of topics, ranging from simple to advanced. Brilliant offers courses on a swath of STEM fields, such as math, science, and computer science. Brilliant offers an interactive and unique take on learning with awesome hands-on puzzles and graphics to make learning fun. Recently, I've been enjoying their course on special relativity. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, put a comment down if you'd like me to do a video on special relativity. I think that'd be a nice crossover. So what are you waiting for? To get started for free, visit brilliant.org slash Michael Penn or click the link in the description. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. And one more time, I'd like to thank Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. We just finished proving our sequence is bounded. Now we'll show that it's monotone. And we're actually gonna show that the even terms form a decreasing sequence, whereas the odd terms form an increasing sequence. And we'll do each of those by induction, but I just wanna point out that it's pretty easy to check that A2 is less than A0. That would be like our base case for the induction for the even terms. And that A3 is bigger than A1. That would, again, be the base case of induction for our odd terms. Okay, so now from here what we'll do is take the difference of AK plus two and A k. And we want to compare this to the difference between a k and a k minus 2. Okay, so we'll do that by applying our recursion twice to rewrite a k plus 2 in terms of a k and a k in terms of a k minus 2. So that's going to leave us with something like this. We have 1 quarter minus 1 quarter minus a k squared. So that's our AK plus two. Maybe let's put that in yellow parentheses and a yellow underline here. And then from that, we will subtract one quarter minus one quarter minus AK minus two squared squared. I missed a squared there. And let's put that in blue parentheses and do a blue underline. Okay, nice. And now we'll start simplifying. So notice we have a quarter minus a quarter. Those will cancel. And then this minus sign will turn this minus into a plus. And then we can switch the order to make it look a little nicer. That'll leave us with something like one quarter minus a k minus two squared squared minus one quarter minus a k squared squared. Okay. But now if we look closely at that, we see that we actually have a difference of squares. This is of the form a squared minus b squared. So we know we can factor something like a squared minus b squared as a minus b times a plus b. So let's do maybe the a plus b first. 
So a plus b will give us one half minus a k minus two squared minus a k squared. So like I said, that's like our a plus b. And then we'll have an a minus b. So that's a quarter minus a quarter. And then this term right here minus this term right here, that'll flip the signs and we get a k squared minus a k minus two squared. Okay, so just let's be careful about this. This is a my plus b, and this is a minus b by our notation up here. Okay, but now given the fact that a k minus 2 and a k are both less than a quarter, that means that when we square them, they'll both be less than a sixteenth. So in the end, we'll see that this is a positive number because we're subtracting those things from the number half. Okay, so that's a positive number. That's pretty important to see. And then we also see that this is another difference of squares, which can be factored into AK plus AK minus two, and then AK minus AK minus two. And again, since AK and AK minus two are both positive, we see that this is also positive. But what does that mean? We have our difference over here is equal to a positive number times a positive number times AK minus AK minus two. So the conclusion is that AK plus two minus AK and AK minus AK minus two have the same sign. So they're either both positive or both negative but which sign they have is determined by whether or not we have even numbers or odd numbers, seeing that in the first setup case, when we have a2 minus a0, that's gonna be negative, so when we take the difference of any two consecutive even entries here, we get something that's negative, Whereas over here, a3 minus a1 is positive. So when we take the difference of any consecutive odd terms, we get something's positive. Okay, so from here we see that we have not quite a single monotone sequence, but we've got maybe two monotone sequences built into this. The odd terms are monotone and the even terms are also monotone. So that means the odd terms will converge and the even terms will also converge. But since they both satisfy the same recursion, that means they'll converge to the same number. So in the end, we know that we have a convergent sequence here. Okay, so now all that's left is to find the value of that conversion sequence. Up to this point, we've shown that our recursively defined sequence AN converges. And so I'll say that it converges to the number A. And now we'll use the standard trick for convergent recursive sequences to find the limit of this sequence. In other words, to find out what that number A is. Furthermore, I'd like to point out that that number A will show up in this expression inside this largest copy of our parentheses with squares here. Okay, so let's get to it. So the limit is n goes to infinity of a n equals a. That means we can write a as the limit as n goes to infinity, but instead of writing a n, I'll apply the recursion. So this will be one quarter minus a n minus one squared. But now we can use limit rules to really just bring the limit inside here, and that's gonna turn this thing into one quarter minus a squared, where a is that limiting value. But that means that we have a squared, and then let's see, plus a minus one quarter is equal to zero. So in other words, a satisfies this quadratic equation. Now we can use the quadratic formula to get values for a here. And I'll let you guys check like all of the computational details, but what we end up with is a is equal to negative one plus minus the square root of two over two. But since all of the terms a n are between zero and a quarter, we need to pick the, the one of these that's between zero and a quarter. And the one that's between zero and a quarter is the one attached to a plus sign. And that's because the one attached to a minus sign is very clearly less than zero. So that means that's our value for a. So that means we can plug a into this expression up here. So let's finish the whole thing off. We have three halves, 
minus two times our value a, which is minus one plus the square root of two over two squared. Now we just need to square this thing out, so that'll give us three halves minus two times, but I'm gonna leave that two out because I'll actually let it change the denominator from a four back to a two because two squared is four, that gives us a four in the denominator, but that two in the numerator can be used to turn it back into a two. Okay, and then we have negative one squared plus root two squared, so that's gonna give us three. And then from there, we'll have minus two times the cross term, but the cross term will give us two root two. Notice the three halves and the three halves cancel and the minus sign cancels that minus sign, leaving us with the square root of two, which is exactly the value of the identity that we found. Now, if you like this video, I've done some other problems about the square root of two where we show that it's irrational in different ways. Maybe you could check one of those out. It should be on the screen right now. And that's a good place to stop. Mm -hmm.